Yes, I love when the NHL trade deadline comes earlier than required. It's been a trend in the NHL lately that players start moving well before the deadline as opposed to one crazy free agent frenzy day. Free agent frenzy trade deadline frenzy day and Ben Sherratt from the Montreal Canadiens, the prize most people have been looking at one because Montreal has a massive fan base and two because we have nothing better to talk about other than this on trade deadline day and that makes perfect sense because it's super fun but where did Sherratt end up going the lottery winner is the Florida Panthers we knew it was going to be one of the four teams in the Atlantic that was really looking at Sherratt I know a lot of Habs fans in this channel were saying no way are they going to trade him within the same same area. He's going to the West Coast. They don't want it. No, you just take the best deal. Put that away. You always take the best deal. And it looks like Florida has come up with the best offer, at least a satisfying offer to Kent Hughes, Jeff Gorton and the Montreal Canadiens. So he's going to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of this year. So Mr. Sherratt makes his way down to Florida, gets his tax break and is going to enjoy his time in the sun. But what did Montreal get back for this pick? Montreal ends up getting a first round pick in 2023. That's because Florida has already dealt their first round pick in 2022, as well as their second round pick in 2022. So they only had a 2023 pick. And I'll be honest, the 2022 draft class is shaping up to be very strong on the back end in the middle to the back end of the first. It's a very deep first round. So it's unfortunate that Montreal couldn't go ahead and take advantage of some of that depth, because at the end of the day, I think this is going to be a low bottom 10 pick in the first, no matter what year it occurs on. So I believe Montreal would have rather had a 2022, but maybe they weren't getting a first offer at all, so they had to settle for the 2023. They also get Tyler Smolanek. He's a college player right now and a former third round draft pick. He's got some potential. We'll talk about him in a second. And they get a fourth round draft pick in this year's draft in 2022. We'll talk about all the new treats, goodies, and snacks you just acquired in Montreal. But first, let's talk about Ben Sherrod himself and the Florida Panthers and what this means for the big cats. Meow. And don't forget, we're sponsored by BetUS. Head over to BetUS.com. If you're a Canadian or American resident, you can go ahead and get a 125% first time deposit bonus to bet on hockey, sports, anything you'd like. They have casino games, horse racing, but I mean, really, this is a hockey channel, so we're all about the hockey. You can even go ahead and bet on your Stanley Cup favorite. Head over to BetUS for a 125% deposit bonus. Use code HGS or the link down below. All proceeds go to support this channel. Ben Chirot plays about 23 minutes a game in Montreal, and that makes sense. He's one of their leading defensemen. He's a left-handed defenseman that can play both sides. Most of the time it ends up, at least I think so, from what I watched, he likes to play on the right side, but it's good to have versatility. He can play on the left or the right side. He's got a big shot on the left side. He's a big guy. He's got a lot of toughness in front of the net, so you're getting a guy that eats up minutes and that supposedly looks like a steady Eddie stay-at-home defenseman with a booming howitzer from the point. Maybe not. When you dig a little bit more into Ben Sherratt, and as a Winnipeg Jets fan, I am intimately familiar with Ben Sherratt. Not that intimate, though. He has 18 points on the season. He's got 11 assists, 7 goals for. So, I mean, not bad. His plus minus is a putrid negative 18. Ugh, woof. And you might be thinking, ah, it's okay. Montreal's just a terrible team this year. And you'd be wrong. Well, you'd be right about them being terrible, but you'd be wrong about that being the sole reason. Because in their Stanley Cup, run last year he was minus 16 which isn't much better and the previous year to that he was a plus five with Winnipeg he was in the single digits for pluses for a guy that ate the kind of minutes that he did which remember when he was in Winnipeg he was at Winnipeg at the peak of the Jets this is when the Jets defense was the best it ever was they had just probably some of the best depth we've ever seen in the NHL for defensemen and really when you look back at Sherratt's plus minus it's always been single digits, never great. He's only had one season in his entire NHL career where he was above six, and that was 15, and that was five years ago with the Winnipeg Jets. Now, what does this translate to in advanced analytics? What do they actually say about Sherratt's game? They say he's not that valuable of a player. His defensive stats are actually negative 3.7, which is five on five only, so there's nothing to do with penalty kill. That's not good. You don't want to see that. And his wins above replacement, which is really where we want to take a look at defensemen, he's negative 2.1, so not a massive contributor for the Florida Panthers. So why do they end up taking this guy? They can see all the same stats. We can see they do the scouting. It's because at the end of the day, they're banking on the fact he's a big bodied left shot defenseman 
who can clear guys out from the front of the net. Like we said, he's going to go ahead and likely move into their top four. But worst case scenario, he plays a steady five, six role. And it's better having him in your hands than it is for Toronto, because we made a whole video about Toronto knowing that, hey, look, Justin Hall is a hole for them. They're going to be shopping defensemen. This was likely a very attractive piece for Toronto simply because he had such a small salary cap hit and Montreal ended up retaining 50% of it. So Toronto could have got this deal done, but I guess they didn't come to the dance with enough donors, money, rubles. Well, you can't have enough rubles. That's it. That shit's tanked. And so it should. But yes, Florida keeps them out of the hands of the Maple Leafs, which is quite important and keeps them out of the hands of the Boston Bruins because we're not sure who the Florida Panthers are going to be playing in the first round. It could end up being Boston, could end up being Toronto. Either way, they keep an asset away from a competitor and one of the best teams the NHL gets slightly better, we think. Now let's talk about all the snacks you got over there in Montreal. The first round pick, we've already talked about it. It's going to be a later first round pick. The odds of hitting these first round picks this late, usually about 60 to 70% in the first round. So it's a pretty good pick. It, there's there's never anything wrong with first round picks. They're like gold in the NHL. The second round picks, they really fall off a cliff and third to seventh round. They're all the same, believe it or not. So it doesn't matter if you get a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth or a seventh. They're all the same percentage of hitting at least when you take a look at the statistics of players that play in the NHL at that point. So they're rounds that don't really matter, but you always want the dart throw. So the fourth round in 2022 is fine. It's just a little sweetener on top. And Tyler Smolanek, I mean, what do you want? The third round pick, he was 74th overall. He's about six feet tall, which isn't too bad. He's your average NHL player. He's got beautiful flow in the hair. So, I mean, that's got to count for something. He played for the U.S. National Development Program, and then he moved over to Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac? Quinnipiac? Never heard of this place. Not once. I know a lot about university and development leagues. Never heard of either of these in my life. So, but that's where he plays. He's not the most enticing prospect in my eyes, but he's a guy you end up getting in your system. And we've said it before. Montreal has the largest scouting staff in the NHL. So if they've taken a look at someone, they've at least done their homework on them with the history of Montreal Canadian draft picks. I don't really know if that really matters much, but the scouts are there and they would have vetted this player. So that's it. Let me know what you think down below. That's one of the big deals. Keep tuning in to Hot Garbage Sports as we keep covering the NHL trade deadline.